All right, here we are finally at the very end of the coding phase for the Hyperion game engine. At this point, what we need to do is pull our very simple game out that we coded and plug Zach's game in. And we're going to find that when we do that, there's going to be one thing missing because we had our level designer beg for a feature request, a very simple one, while he was putting the game together. And we gave him that feature. So we just want to show you how easy it is to add a feature in. So let's go ahead and get started, Logan. The first thing I want us to do is go into level and kill everything that's inside of build level. Okay. Let's bring up our level class. So this is everything that we did here's on our, camera here. Here's our build level method. We're going to take everything. So I'm going to start at the top, hold shift, and page down a few times. So that's our real simple blue, red, green, yellow room. Yeah. And, and where the player is at. We're going to take all of that out. So delete, and now we have an empty method for build level. Okay. And now let's go over to our game manager and take our game rules and get them out as well. All right, we've got apply rules, we've got some game rules, same thing, we're going to select everything out of here and delete it. So now we're left with a blank apply rules. Okay, now in the last video when we put the, or a couple videos back, when we put the word wrap into place, we uh, went ahead and used the real Hyperion Projects game screen title as our screen title, so that's being used properly now. So what we need to do is just simply paste in all of the build level code and then all of the apply rules code, and that's it. So we have down here, if we open this up, here is all of the code for build level. And let's go ahead and start at the top. Yeah, you guys can see it's huge, and this is why we're obviously not typing this out. And this really just gets into the game logic of the game. But basically, you know, we're starting off just like you guys saw before, where we say rooms is equal to a new room. That is a 6 by 7. So that is the grid that Zach decided to use. Then same thing, we create our room and our item that we can work with, make a new room, and look at this. Zach has thrown in comments so he knows where he is at on the grid that he's drawn out on a piece of paper. And then he's just added some extra comments in. Here we go, assign this room to the location. Uh, set up some stuff, so the title, Ice Planet, the description, someone has been here, and blah, 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 adding the exits. So I guess for anyone that hasn't finished Hyperion yet, um, spoiler warning. Yeah, big, big spoiler warning, thank you. So uh, an ice planet, wow, so we can get off planet. Um, and all because this is zero, zero does not mean that this is where our player starts. As a matter of fact, if we come over here and scroll all the way to the bottom, you can see there's where our player's location is initialized at 1, 6, actually. So with that, if I can get my mouse to work with me, all we need to do, so you can just see it over and over and over, all it is is declaring what the room is, okay, it's getting the room all set up, adding the exits to the exits list for the room, and then creating items and putting the items in the room. It's just doing that over and over and over, exactly what you guys have already seen when we did the very simple red, blue, yellow, green level a few minutes ago. So at this point, Logan, let's go ahead and copy all of this code. And right. paste that over into our, uh, yeah, over into the level, into the build level method. Okay, so now our level's done. As a matter of fact, at this point, if you run it, we're well, actually, we're going to have the, the feature that is missing, the feature request. And let's go ahead and throw game rules in real quick, and then we'll talk about this is off world. So let's go ahead and jump over to our game manager, come over here to rules. So here's all of the rules. doesn't look quite as nice because, well, Poor old notepad can't handle a line quite that long, but it's just a whole bunch of ifs, just like you guys saw before. As a matter of fact, just to point things out, if the player moves more than 150 times, another big spoiler, then you're dead. And that's actually based off of a few different conditions, like are we off-world? Are we in possession of a fusion grenade? Hmm... And then we've got other rules in here as well, where if like you have pass key number one, then you're in these particular direction, or excuse me, particular areas, we're going to add directions. Um, if you have, you know, pass key number two, then we're going to add these directions, change the description of a room. You guys get the idea. Exactly the same thing that you saw with the red, blue, yellow, green level we did a minute ago. So Logan, go ahead and grab that. So all grab the code. All of it. Copy, copy it. it. And we'll simply paste it. There we go. So he's pasted it into our apply rules method for the game manager. And it all looks quite nice. Now, again, if he goes to compile, you're going to see the same errors below. we got 17 of them, and they are all related to is off world. 
One of the things that our level designer asked, begged, and pleaded for was the ability to quickly determine if we are on-world or off-world. And this became really important. Zach will talk about this when we go over the game design phase in, in regards to how the level's made. But if you think about it, if you run out of time, you have this SWAT team that shows up and takes you out, right? Well, that's kind of weird to have the SWAT team show up and take you out if you are off planet Earth and on some lava planet. And the SWAT team rounds the corner. What, what so behind a volcano? SWAT Where? team rounds the corner and then bursts into flames. Exactly. Do they have on environmental suits? I don't, I don't get it. So we needed the ability to determine are we on world or off world so that we could use that in the rules to make sure that the description you got at the end made sense. So, Logan, let's show them how easy it is to add this one little feature, Is Off World. Right. The Is Off World was in, um, was meant to be added onto a room, so we could tell, is that room Off World or not, so okay. we could decide on the ending. That means we need to go back over to Room, so I'll grab our Room class, let's go up to the top where we we're defining private variables. Um, this, of course, has to be remembered by the room, so we're going to need to have a private variable to hold this. So we'll make a private. This is going to be a Boolean because it's just a simple yes or no. Is it off world? Yeah. And we'll call this is off world for the variable name. Okay. Now, because this is private and we want to access this from outside of room, we're going to need a property. So we'll expand the properties region. I'm going to pick on one pre-existing property for the ease of copy and paste. So we'll just copy, paste, paste again. And now we have our property. We can call this something that makes sense, like is off world. And that's change the type yep. to a bool. And then inside of it, we want to re get or set the is off world variable. All right, all right. let's try building again. And Look that cleans that. up all of our building. All we needed to do was add that simple uh, variable and property. And now Zach in his code can determine if we're on world and off world. So if he creates a room and says, all right, this room is from the ice planet, let's set it as an off world room. And in that way, and by default, did we default up above? Let's go ahead and default. Yeah, we should do that. Let's grab is off world. Let's default that to false. So he doesn't have to worry while running around in the installation. When he's defining those rooms, he doesn't have to worry about going into each one and say, is off world? No, it's, it's already been predefined for us. It's the default. So that gives us everything we need. So if we go ahead and run our game, we start out with our title screen, hit a key, and look at this. The Troy Tech main entrance hall is mostly darkened. Only emergency lighting illuminates the walls from beneath. A large Trojan soldier statue stands in blah, 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 blah. And then look at this. Items in room. There's pass key number one. Possible directions, east and west. What shall I do? This is just like the game we showed you guys back at the very beginning. So let's move in one of those directions, Logan. Let's move east. So moving east. This room is where all employees and visitors are scanned before entering the facility. It looks like someone lobbed a grenade into that stinks for them. And here we go. Items on the floor. Security guard PDA. Let's pick that up. All right. Pick up security guard G -U -A. PDA. G -U yeah, not Midas. Uh, the PDA has one message on it, and then it goes on from there. And we can type in look. Also notice as we're looking around the level that word wrap is in fact working for everything. Yep. Descriptions, pick up messages, everything. So we were able to put this game into place quickly. I mean, once we got all of the rules and the level in place from Zach, and it was really easy, even though he was working in code, what we did is we gave him a snippet of what a room looks like. And then for the game rules, we asked him to just give us in his language. Um, you know, if we were in this room and had this item or had placed that item there, what happened? And at that point, Logan took all of that terminology that he gave us and turned that into code. But as far as constructing the level and all, he did that himself. We just gave him a very basic template to follow, and he just copy and paste for each new room and new item. And that's pretty much it, ladies and gentlemen. We are now at the end, final, done, of the Hyperion Project Engine. I hope that you have enjoyed the experience, as I'm calling it, of writing a game from start to finish. We're not done yet, though. This is just the engine. Now what I'd like to do is bring in our level designer and have our level designer, Mr. Zach Parrish, 
talk about how the game is going to play out using the feature set that we've given them. So that's going to wrap up this video. Thanks a lot, guys.